people tend to think of penguins as being just one thing, that there's one penguin that they see. But there's actually 18 or 19 living species, and this is depending on who you talk to. So there's DNA evidence for whether the rock hopper penguin should be split up or not. And they live in all types of different environments. So we tend to envision penguins living in very cold, icy climates. And some species do. The emperor penguin certainly does live in one of the harshest environments on Earth. But we actually find them all over the southern hemisphere. We see them in coastal deserts in South America. We find them in forests in New Zealand. We find them on barren, isolated islands where they build their nests out of rocks. And so the key for finding a home if you're a penguin is not cold, it's isolated because they want to be away from where predators can get to their eggs and their chicks. So we, we kind of think of penguins as black and white, the tuxedo wearing penguin, but there's actually a surprising amount of color in the penguin world. We have the yellow eyed penguin, which as advertised has bright yellow eyes and what looks like a little yellow ninja mask of feathers around its head. We have crested penguins like the macaroni penguin that have these bright plumes. They're also golden colors. We have the emperor penguin, which actually has orange on both its beak and on its neck. And what's really interesting is there's ultraviolet markings on these penguin bills that we can't see, but that the penguins can detect. And so they have even more color than we realize. And of course, the little blue penguin, which is little and kind of bluish slaty color. And that's an actual ultra structural color that's formed by the microstructure of the feathers. The scientific name for the African penguin is Spiniscus demersis, and depending on who you're talking to, some people refer to it as the African penguin, the black-footed penguin, or the jackass penguin, and that's because of the sound it makes. It sounds like a braying donkey, so... The African penguin is an endangered species. Its um, population is under threat from a lot of different factors like competition with commercial fisheries. There's been occasional oil spills in the area which have really impacted penguin populations. And they're the only species in Africa today. So they're also one of the most temperate climate adapted penguins and that makes them really common in zoos and aquariums. So if you've seen a penguin at the Coney Island Aquarium or at the Jenkinson's Aquarium in New Jersey you will probably have seen a African penguin. And one of the projects I'm really interested in is establishing a way to see how tall a penguin was based on its bones. And often in the case of the fossil record, we're dealing with a single leg bone or a few flipper bones, and it can be difficult to extrapolate size from that. And so I've been measuring penguins at different aquariums, and uh, we were in New Jersey, uh, Reagan Quarg, um, the penguin master there, allowed us to measure some, some African penguins. And we measured one Dunlap, um, his girlfriend Kringle, and we, we got surprisingly variable heights depending on how the penguins are acting. So they were stretching up to get some food. They can be 20 inches tall. When they're kind of hunkered down, they may be only 14 inches tall. Uh, and that's important to consider. And we're also getting the, their weights from their vet records. And so this is hopefully eventually when we have enough data going to allow us to take a bone and measure it and get an idea of how heavy and how tall that fossil species was. Today, African penguins mostly like to breed on offshore islands, but we see them at some mainland colonies as well. So Boulder's Beach is a great example. That's right outside of Cape Town. Uh, they like to be in environments where predators can't bother them. And so uh, islands are good for that because things like rats and, and other mammalian predators can't either harass the penguin adults or, um, equally importantly, steal their eggs. And so being on an island really protects them from that. In 2010, I visited South Africa to look at some fossils with my good friend, Dr. Dr. Daniel Thomas, who was working at the museum there at the time, and we looked at fossils from two different places, the Langebanvig quarry, and we also looked at an older site, the Saldana steel locality, and this is a place where fossils were discovered when a steel plant was being built. And so these are 5 million years and 10 million years old respectively, and they give us two snapshots of penguin diversity. And what really surprised us is when we were looking through these new fossils from the steel locality, we found evidence for four different species. And one of them was very big, about the size of the king penguin, and one was tiny like the little blue penguin. So we have four different species. They're spanning a huge range of sizes, and they're all living side by side. And this is in a place where we only have one species today. And so this really raises a question of what allowed penguins to diversify back in the past and what happened that, that re reduced them to one species today. But a lot of living groups of animals have really good fossil records as well and penguins are no exception. And it's surprising how old they are. The oldest fossil penguin is a species named Waimanu Manaringai from New Zealand and it's about 61 million years old. 
And so this is an incredibly long time ago, and this is a species that's basically evolving very soon after the mass extinction at the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary. And to put that in perspective, the oldest fossils that are closer to humans than to chimps, the oldest fossils of our own lineage, they're roughly 7 billion years in age. And so we can say penguins are 10 times older than humans. They've been here for a very, very long time. And one of the interesting geographic patterns is they show up right away in Antarctica, they show up in Australia very quickly, they show up in even near the equator very quickly. But it takes them a very long time to get to Africa. The oldest fossils are about 11 million years old, and so it's pretty much the last major landmass that the penguins arrived on. And we've been curious about why that was for a long time. And so one of the things we tried to solve um, with our research project is figure out where the ancestral area is, where these penguins arrived from. And for all of the species that we are able to get good data, um, all signs point to South America. And this makes a lot of sense when we think about ocean currents, because there's a large counterclockwise current system called the South Atlantic Gyre. And this basically would allow a penguin to take a free ride on what we call a penguin conveyor belt across the ocean and be basically dropped off in Africa. And it doubles as a food source for these penguins because the Benguala current, which is running up against the coast of Africa, against the Atlantic coast of Africa, is bringing up cold water. There's cold water upwelling. This is very nutrient rich and it attracts plankton and that attracts small fish and this is a food source for these animals. And so it's not only a dispersal vector, it's also a really good thing for the penguins in terms of their feeding ecology. So one of the big remaining mysteries is what happened to Africa's fossil penguin species. There were four species hanging out five billion years ago all together in the same environment and today we only have one. And so we have a big gap in the fossil record because the oldest fossil specimens of the living African penguin are only about 400,000 years old. And by that time, there's no evidence that any of the fossil species survived. So we know that they're in place about half a million years ago, but we don't know what happened in between that. Did all four vanish because of some catastrophic event? Did they go out one by one? We don't even know if the modern penguin arrived when they were still here or arrived in a vacuum where there were no species and just took over. So it could have outcompeted some of them. It may have just arrived after they had already gone extinct. And that's one of the things that keeps us coming back for more. We'd love to get into the field and look for fossils of those ages to try to fill in that blink. And for a long time, scientists thought that this was an endemic radiation. So they thought what happened is some population of penguins arrived and over time split into four different species. And in the case of the penguins, Daniel Thomas and I conducted a phylogenetic analysis. That is, we used DNA evidence and 200 characters of the skeleton to recreate a family tree of penguins. And to our surprise, the fossil species were not close relatives of the modern penguin. It turns out that there's at least three separate events where penguins make it to Africa and, and colonize that landmass. And so these fossil species appear to have each arrived individually, and none of them are the ancestor to the living species. And so that's an even more recent uh, event where that penguin dispersed to Africa. As a scientist, I'm really interested in penguins because they provide a great example of convergent evolution. Seeing how they all converge on the same type of skeletal plan is really interesting, and we'd like to learn what pressures lead to this kind of adaptation. And, and penguins are great for that because they have a remarkably good fossil record. It's, it's just a perfect group to focus on.